if we look at the <coughs> not just the, the, the mall out uh, layout, but also the shopping experience within the mall, how has that changed over time? The demands from consumers on the shopping experience, and how is that in general different from from let's say Western malls? I think the uh, traditional Chinese uh, shopping environment started with uh, pedestrian street, which is where they always gather together, the commercial pedestrian street. And then uh, uh, some 20 years back, they have their own local department stores. And today you see large hypermarkets like Carrefour, Tesco, Ocean, Walmart, right? integrating into uh, shopping centers. And uh, this has evolved over a period of time. Uh, the uh, foreign developers uh, also bring in uh, from foreign developers from Hong Kong, Singapore, Europe, and the uh, U.S. Are also in China today. They bring in fresh new experiences. And uh, if you go to some of the uh, better quality, uh, better better design malls, you can see that uh, they are as good as those in the uh, U.S. and Europe today. However, there are still a good eighty percent of the developers, right? Who are still at the learning curve. They will need uh, architects, designers, all over the world to help them, you know, plan, design a good mall. Uh, the the eighty percent of these other developers are probably in the residential development side, and they see the opportunities to balance between recurrent income from malls and residential incomes from the sales of relationship units. And you can see that there is a huge uh, influx of such developers who are new to the mall business, right? Uh, thousands of them, right? Uh, some of them is getting into it by virtue of being a, a, a mixed-use developer now. The government insists that they have to have commercial components. And they begin to look at shopping centre as one of the commercial components beside the hotels. And uh, the others are looking at uh, potential list potential of listing their vehicles, uh, the, the, the real estate vehicles someday, and they need to have a balance of uh, uh, fixed income versus uh, sales income. So the, there's a two different batch of developers. And uh, China went through the first wave of learning curve where malls are designed without proper laid out, uh, proper height. And uh, I think they have gone through that cycle. Developers today are more aware. They are sending their staff to training. Right? They are willing to uh, hire professionals, both in terms of store design, to uh, store marketing, to uh, Graphics designers, designers for the for the shopping centers, they are beginning to do that. And uh, with the first uh, uh, few, uh, f with the first lot of uh, quality malls coming out, it also give a sense of competition to the new ones that's coming in. That they, they have to uh, be very systematic in hiring the right uh, consultants and hiring the right people to help them plan, design, and operate the mall. What could we see in a Chinese mall? which we could never see in a Western mall? I think uh, in Asia in general, uh, malls are vertical malls, which that they go as high as uh, four-storey to five-storey. You know? uh, that is one feature. Another very important feature is that uh, the Chinese has a high expenditure on food and beverage, F&B. You can see that the, the uh, eating is a leisure here. Right? The, uh, and, uh, the, in terms of trade mix, the percentage of uh, uh, FMB is higher. Uh, conversely, I think malls are getting bigger. Uh, Chinese uh, shopping centers will need more fresh ideas from the western side in terms of uh, uh, food and beverage, in terms of uh, fresh entertainment concepts for the shopping centers. And uh, we hope that uh, uh, more foreign uh, retailers, restaurant operators, team restaurants, owners and operators investors uh, could uh, come into this market and make the industry even more exciting. Let's, let's talk a little bit about fresh entertainment. As the standard entertainment of a mall, I would go so far to say, is almost a movie theater. What, what new developments do we, do we see in fresh entertainment? What are, what are new things coming up? Uh, currently, the, uh, the few key entertainment ideas in the shopping center is cinema, of course, and then you have the, the Chinese like to sing, KTV. Uh, there is also uh, 
some uh, food very good food reflexology centers coming out in the shopping centers, uh, and we we like to see that uh, there are some very good uh, uh, team restaurants uh, from both the U.S. and the Europe. I think the Chinese will love that. Uh, we hope to see more indoor entertainment, even to, uh, indoor theme parks, all right, for the larger malls, like what you see in the in the Everton Mall or the Mall of America, but not really necessarily of the same scale, but you know, a smaller version of that. Uh, there is a lack of uh, entertainment concept, merging education and entertainment. Uh, the Chinese like the, the, the children to be well educated, they spend a lot of money in that. So bringing entertainment concepts where the kids can learn and play at the same time will be a major attraction in China. And uh, there is also a need for more adults, uh, other form of uh, fresh uh, uh, ideas from overseas. Uh, today you can see that uh, malls have, uh, have uh, ice skating rinks. Uh, malls have, uh, uh, some of them have uh, IMAX. Right? But I believe that uh, with the uh, enormous potential in China and the great efforts, uh, new ideas can be brought in from overseas into China. Could you give us a little bit more information? Because I have to say, I love this expression you just used, edutainment, on, on what has been done and what will be done in the future. And give us a little richness to edutainment. Well, uh, I, I think I, if I could, and it's a cute quote example, you know, I, I've, I don't know if you heard of the Kidzania. No, Kidzania is a concept where you have uh, 10 to 15 different concepts uh, where the kids come in, they have to uh, they learn to it's called pretend play, pretend, pretend to be a doctor, pretend to be a nurse, and they learn everything uh, the, the doctors use, uh, the equipment that doctors use. You know, and uh, they, they learn to be the, the, they take turns to be playing doctor and nurses. They learn the language of uh, use in the hospital, the equipment they use in the hospital. And uh, there are also other uh, things like kit shop, they learn how to make a kit. Right? And they, they work to earn the money and you can draw money out from the ATM machines because they have, uh, they have uh, worked for X number of hours, they learn something. And, and they learn about different professions from a very young age. They learn to take responsibilities, they learn to be leaders, and they learn to serve others as well. And with a single child policy in China, that's a wonderful concept. Uh, so this is entertainment, where you, are, you enjoy yourself, have fun, and yet you learn a lot of new things every day. And uh, a concept like this, you can get sponsors from the various uh, chain stores for this for this concept. So it's something that is catching on here and uh, we hope that uh, 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 professional operators and, and creators of entertainment concept like this kind can be brought into China. I will ask two very quick questions on edutainment. So I think it's very fascinating. What, what is the age group this is targeted at? And is it in a way that parents can almost park their children there? Or do parents spend the time with the children together? Uh, for the younger ones, I think it's important to have the parents to be together. And uh, for, the, uh, for the, the, uh, the, 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 the concept that I explained earlier, it probably is in the region of uh, uh, 5 to uh, 10 years old, you know, uh, where they can be running on their own uh, without the parents uh, being with them. That would be all free of charge? Well, the, the, the parents can, can pay a fee uh, inside there uh, for, for two or three hours, all right? And the parents can go here with their own shopping and then pick the children up uh, after, the, uh, after their shopping trip. Uh, conversely, the mall could work with the, with the ed entertainment operator, all right? And then for, uh, uh, if you buy above a certain amount of goods, you can always do a reimbursement or some kind of redemption schemes. I think it's a very highly promising concept in China. Yes, I think so. If we go away from the kids and zoom a little bit outside and go on a larger scale again, if we talk about property and property selection, 
What are key selection criteria for development? What should be taken into consideration? And what are the difficulties you come across? I think uh, China offers tremendous opportunity for shopping center uh, development. Uh, and the, it's very important that the, the site location is first uh, good for the product that you are doing. There are many types of malls that is, uh, can be built in China from uh, CBD mall in the city center to community malls and uh, to uh, regional malls in China because of its scale is, is, is even bigger than the US, uh, 1.3 billion people. Uh, but first and foremost, it is very important to make sure that uh, the site is accessible to your primary catchment. Uh, some of the major cities are very clogged up in terms of the uh, traffic, traffic jams and all that. It's quite important to understand the primary catchment, how many uh, people can you uh, can you can the mall cater to, and your secondary catchment, which is what uh, the, the from five to ten kilometers, uh, how many uh, shoppers can you bring into the shopping center on the weekend and the holidays period? The second thing is that uh, uh, it is very important to make sure that uh, you understand the demographics before you build the first shopping center. What kind of shoppers are you catering for, and then uh, determining the right size for to build the mall, right? where they should do it. Phase in two phases or in one phases, mm -hmm. and it's, it's very important to work on the three things: financially viable, uh, that your investment cost versus your operating uh, and your running cost, uh, and your rental mm -hmm. numbers are all uh, well uh, taken care of. Mm -hmm. like, rather, you have done your proper financial uh, feasibilities, and uh, uh, the challenges in uh, most of these uh, cities will be in China. There is. Uh, no proper statistics, statistics published on uh, these uh, supply and demand. So it's very important for any developers or even uh, retailers coming into China to understand the current and future supply and demand of space. All right. Unlike in Europe and the US, uh, it's very transparent and figures are readily available. There's no proper publications on these areas. So it's important to understand the, uh, the market supply and demand and, and then understand who else is building um, uh, another mall next to you. All right? uh, also, uh, it's very important for you to uh, plan uh, a mall that is uh, uh, catered for your catchment. Uh, a mall that is uh, uh, too big will create a lot of empty space. Right? Uh, and at the same time, a mall that is too small, you may not stay competitive in the long run. So uh, more developers have to differentiate their products carefully. How am I going to bring the customers into the mall and shop? And at the same time, consider the long-term functionality. The demographics will change over time. So the mall must be built with an end in mind that eventually, as, a, as the demographics change, all right, the mall is able to adapt to the consumers.